Chapter 6, The Journey from Platform 9 and 3 quarters, Part 3, um, with permission from Scholastic. But we don't feel like leaving, do we, boys? We've eaten all our food, and you still seem to have some. Goyle reached toward the chocolate frogs next to Ron. Ron leapt forward, but before he'd so much as touched Goyle, Goyle let out a horrible yell. Scabbers the rat was hanging off his finger, sharp little teeth sunk into Goyle's knuckle. Crab and Malfoy backed away as Goyle sw swung Scabbers around and around, howling, and then Scabbers finally flew off and hit the window. All three of them disappeared at once. Perhaps they thought that there were more rats lurking among the sweets, or perhaps they'd heard footsteps, because a second later, Hermione Granger had come in. What has been going on? she said, looking at all the sweets all over the place, and Ron picking Scabbers up by his tail. I think he's been knocked out, Ron said to Harry. He looked close at Scabbers. No, I don't believe it. He's gone back to sleep. And so he had. You've met Malfoy before? Harry explained about their meeting at Diagon Alley. I've heard of his family, said Ron darkly. They were some of the first to come back on our side after you-know-who disappeared. Said they'd been bewitched. My dad doesn't believe it. He says Malfoy's father didn't need an excuse to go over to the dark side. He turned to Hermione. Can we help you with something? You better hurry up and put your robes on. I've just been up to the front to ask the conductor, and he says we're nearly there. You've been fighting, have you? You'll be in trouble before we even get there. Scabbers has been fighting, not us, said Ron, scowling at her. Would you mind leaving while we change? All right. I only came in here because people outside are behaving very childishly, racing up and down the corridors said Hermione in a sniffy voice. And you've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know that? Ron glared at her as she left. Harry peered out the window. It was getting dark. He could see mountains and forest under a deep purple sky. The train seemed to be slowing down. He and Ron took off their jackets and pulled on their long black robes. Ron's were a bit short for him. You could see his sneakers underneath them. A voice echoed through the train. We'll be reaching Hogwarts in five minutes' time. Please leave your luggage on the train. It will be taken to the school separately. Harry's stomach lurched with nerves, and Ron, he saw, looked pale underneath his freckles. They crammed their pockets with the last of the sweets and joined the crowd thronging the corridor. The train slowed right down and finally stopped. People pushed their way toward the door and out onto a tiny, dark platform. Harry shivered in the cold night air. Then a lamp came bobbing over the heads of the students, and Harry heard a familiar voice. First years! First years over here! All right there, Harry! Hagrid's big hairy face beamed over the sea of heads. Come on, follow me! Any more first years? Mind your step now! First years, follow me! Slipping and stumbling, they followed Hagrid down what seemed to be a steep, narrow path. It was so dark on either side of them that Harry thought there must be thick trees there. Nobody spoke much. Neville, the other boy who kept losing his toad, sniffed once or twice. You'll get your first sight of Hogwarts in a sec, Hagrid called over his shoulder. Just around this bend here. There was a loud, ooh. The narrow path had opened suddenly onto the edge of a great black lake. Perched atop a high mountain on the other side, its windows sparkling in the starry sky, was a vast castle with many turrets and towers. No more in four to a boat, Hagrid called pointing to a fleet of little boats sitting in the water by the shore. Harry and Ron were followed into their boat by Neville and Hermione. Everyone in, shouted Hagward, Hagrid, who had a boat all to himself. Right then, forward! And the fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake, which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent, staring up at the great castle overhead. It towered over them as they sailed nearer and nearer to the cliff on which it stood. Heads down, yelled Hagrid, as the first boats reached the cliff. They all bent their heads, and the little boats carried them through a curtain of ivy that, lid a, that hid a wide opening in the cliff face. They were carried along a dark tunnel, which seemed to be taking them right underneath the castle, until they reached a kind of underground harbor where they clambered out onto rocks and pebbles. Oh, are you there? Is this your toad? said Hagrid, who was checking the boats as people climbed out of them. "'Trevor!' Neville said blissfully, holding out his hands. Then they clambered up a passageway in the rock after Hagrid's lamp, coming out at last onto smooth, damp grass right in the shadow of the castle. 
They walked up a flight of stone steps and crowded around the big, the huge oak front door. Everyone here? You there, still got your toad? Hagrid raised a gigantic fist and knocked three times on the castle door.